I'm Alyssa Brands. I'm on the Algebra 2 Impact Team. And over the last two years, we've met with Dr. Bloomberg, and we had a goal, ultimately, of trying to increase collaboration in our math classrooms. What we all tried to do as a group is have the kids come up with success criteria on what makes a good group and uh, effective collaboration. So we had the kids watch a video. Um, it was just a, a minute and a half video of what I would call a weak example of collaboration. Think back on Tuesday when we were in our groups. How well did we work in our groups together, would you say? Totally. Not, Not that good. that good. I wouldn't say amazingly. Why, can I ask a couple of questions, why do you think you did not work well in your groups together? Had your phones. We were doing math. Yeah, it was dead quiet. That's not going to happen today, all right? So what we are going to do first is we are going to watch a one and a half minute video on group work. Then from there, I'm going to ask you in your groups, we're gonna take about three minutes, and you with your groups are going to discuss and write down what you think are good qualities and attributes of a collaborative group, okay? We then went uh, around the groups one at a time, each asking uh, a student to state something that they wrote down. So I'm gonna start over here with Ahmad, Luke, and Caitlin. What is one thing that you wrote down? Uh, we decided to put on our list active listening. Active listening. We put that like everyone should like stay on the same page and not move on until everyone understands. I like that one. Our group came up with respecting each other's work. We said eliminating distractions, like putting your phones away and stuff. Excellent. We said don't exclude anyone. We said uh, everyone has to contribute because you're only as strong as your weakest link. Okay. We had to, we had created an ac acronym of LICE, listen, <laughs> intensity, Intensely. Intense, intently communicating and effectively. I'll just write lice. <laughs> it's listening intently, communicating effectively. Lice. <laughs> I think we've done every group. Is there anything else that you think we should include on this? Look at your list. Then we wrote, I wrote it on a board, on a, on a big sheet of paper, so that all the students could see it. And I also noted that there was uh, a group that had um, had a conversation about picking roles. I did notice as I was coming around, I also liked one that I saw on this group over here that they wanted, they were gonna have a moderator. So sometimes it's good to have jobs so that somebody's in charge of keeping the group on task. Maybe somebody's in charge of reading directions. Somebody's the recorder. Okay, so if you want to, in your own group, assign somebody to be the reader, somebody to be the recorder um, and the moderator, if you will. Um, I think that would be a good thing to do. So the actual math task, we had spent time uh, graphing sine and cosine graphs. They were given a real life scenario of a uh, population of foxes and rabbits. They were asked to graph various populations over a year for both the foxes and the rabbits. They were then asked, which was something they had not done before, to develop the equation for each graph based on the graph that was given. They then had to answer some questions. One of the questions was, why does it seem that the fox population chases the rabbit population? And so they had to think about how ultimately foxes eat rabbits and so there'll be a decline and then an incline and so on and so forth. No, no, no. all right, look, so since this is the sinusoidal axis, if you take 1,000 and you look for the maximum and minimum, so this is 500, so that means that the amplitude is 500, right? And then it's also 500 since the max is like 1,500, yeah. Yeah, 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 okay, that makes sense. Yeah. So we have to find the period, so that's, oh shoot. I have no idea. Yeah, well, I know how to find it, but this isn't like completed, so that's a problem. Do you just. I would love some velvet. I mean, can we like extrapolate? I have no idea what you mean by that. It should be, uh, I think, three. Because what? because the period starts from the zero to, you know, um, the fifth number, and if you. Wait, why would I go to the fifth? Because of like five um, numbers. We're like, oh, you take the, like five points. Oh, yeah. I got you. No, 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 because 
It has to be the entire thing. Like, it has to be from the start of the, like, the graphing of the sign to, like, the end of it. But it doesn't, the graph of it, like, doesn't end. No, yeah, here's the case. When you, like, um, in these types of functions, um, I, I forgot what they call, but every, like, every, about every four numbers are in a certain equation. Yeah, but this, this um, graph is stretched out. Like, the five numbers are the numbers for the entire graph of the sign, and the entire graph of the sign isn't there. Like, the period would be, it has to be from, like, this to, like, Wherever should it be is. at 12 then? Or should it be at 11? Because if you take five I think points, it's at 12. Because the first point's in the sinusoidal axis, and then you take the minimum and then the sinusoidal, and then the maximum, and then it should go back down. Yeah, like, I think it's supposed... I think if we graph the next number, it would be down here, and that would be an entire period. So I think the period is 12. Yeah. So then... So did you guys get pi over 6? Wait, equals... Has 6 over 12? Pi. Yeah, I did get that. So pi over 6x. No. Do you want me to show you how I got Yes. Okay, so since we know that the period in the graph is 12, we know that to find the period, you have to do 2 pi over b. So we know that 12 equals 2 pi over b. So then you're going to like cross multiply so that it's 2 pi equals 12b. And then you divide 12. And then you simplify uh, the fraction. I think Is that the one that's like? Because um, there's, there's no like... Um, there's no sh there's no shift. So it's just oh, so you're right. it should yeah, be zero. zero. Yeah. You're right, Ahmad. Okay. So that means it's five hundred sine times pi over six. Oh x plus one thousand. Okay, cool. Good job, guys. Um, I did do, however, uh, a little follow up sheet at the end of the task. We did have time for that in which they were given a rubric that we had developed during our work with Dr. Bloomberg. They were meant to assess themselves. They were also meant to assess the group and then uh, ask themselves what they could potentially do to further increase not only their level of collaboration but the collaboration of individuals in the group. Um, one thing that I've thought about is perhaps in the middle of each group, or during, like during the first time that I do this perhaps, maybe having the kids um, just take a break and say, okay, where are we at with our criteria? Are we still, are we still on, ta on, on topic, if you will, with what we said we wanted to be accomplishing here as far as collaboration goes, not just what you're doing on the task. As many of my team members thought, uh, it felt a little, I'm gonna use the word babyish at first, to sit there and ask them to come up with what makes a good group. I, I think as sophomores that I had, one assumes that they are familiar with and ready to work in a group, but I think spending the time having them come up with a success criteria was so beneficial. They worked so well together, and I definitely will do this at the beginning of the year. Uh, the posters that we will make can potentially be added to, so there'll be a fluid document. Uh, we might even delete some that we think are now just ones that we've gotten good enough at that we don't need to be reminded of them. Um, so they will be a mainstay in my classroom.